हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम गोइंग टू डिलीवर ए लेक्चर इन द फर्स्ट सीरीज अबाउट द इवोल्यूशन ऑफ माइनिंग लॉज इन इंडिया आवर माइनिंग इज कंसिडर्ड वन ऑफ द ओल्डेस्ट प्रोफेशन नेक्स्ट टू एग्रीकल्चर द हिस्ट्री ऑफ माइनिंग डेट्स बैक टू द डेज ऑफ हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन द अर्लीस्ट एंड द मोस्ट ऑथेंटिक records related to mine and minerals is in in the arthashastra a, a treatise compiled by the kautilya better known as chanakya in between 329 to 296 bc this treatise elaborates the properties of the mineral the method of excavation the extraction of metal from the minerals and the manufacturing of different alloys in medieval india the lead and zinc mining done in a in a big manner has the evidence in in rajasthan then uh, the first oil well was drilled in digboi in the year 1986 1886 and the gold mining is started in the year 1880 so in the in the princely is in the east royal princely estates they had different set of rules regarding grant of mineral concession and the levy of charges so so now i will come to the post independent india how the rules has evolved the first mineral policy conference held in the year 1947 led to enactment of mines and mineral regulation and development act 1948 and consequently mineral concession rule 1949 and petroleum concession rule 1949 so mineral concession rule 1949 was the first set of legislation for our first legal framework for grant of mineral concession in independent india then <clears throat> with the adoption of constitution of india the legislative power of central government as well as the state governments were well defined and well demarcated the entry 54 in part 1 of 7th schedule empowers the central government to frame rules and regulation for development of mineral resources whereas entry 23 in part 2 of 7th schedule empowers the state government to frame rules and regulation for development of minerals subject to list 1 so with this another mineral industrial policy resolution adopted in the year 1956 placed important minerals like coal iron ore lignite copper zinc for ex exploration exploitation exclusively by the public sector and other minerals were kept in other schedule which could be operated by the private as well as the public sector so in pursuance of industrial policy resolution 1956 mines and mineral regulation and development act 1957 was enacted and consequently mineral conservation and development rules 1958 for conservation and development of minerals as well as mineral concession rule 1960 Uh, for grant of mineral concessions were framed under the act so mines and mineral Con uh, regulation and development act 1957 is the umbrella act governing the mineral sector this act has undergone different changes over periods of time so first change took place in the year 1958 and in mmdr amendment act 1958 it was pro it was provided 
that the mineral concession granted for coals will be granted for coals before the year 9 october 1949 will be exempted from certain provisions of the act so that the production of coal doesn't get hampered then we had repealing and amending act 1960 where in the section 32 as well as third schedule regarding dead rent was deleted concerning to the mmdr act 1957 then we had a amendment in the year 1972 in the, the amendment 72 enhanced the government control over the mining operation through the incorporation of the clause relating to termination of the uh, termination of uh, mining leases on account of uh, conservation of mineral and regulation of mines then we had lowering of ceiling for individual leaseholds then powers to modify the mining lease so that to bring it in conformity with the provisions of the mmdr act 1957 then central government had the power to authorize organization like gsi to make investigation in certain cases then central government had the power uh, acquired the power to grant mining lease and prospecting lease <coughs> over territorial and continent territorial water and continental shelf then removal of ceiling on the royalty of the minerals and inclusion of a provision of dead rent and enhancement of penalties and compounding these were the major changes brought out in the amendment act 1972 then the act was further amended in the year 1986 as we know in in 86 the environment gained lot of importance and similar we had a environment protection act where from if it was uh, said that in mining areas also environment protection measures are to be taken so so we had pre mature determination of lease clause based on not only on the basis of regulation of mine and development of mineral but also on the basis of conservation of environment protection of environment flooding of uh, rivers and on other basis then a significant provision regarding submission of mining plan so that a mine can be operated in a more systematic and systematic scientific manner was incorporated by by amending a provision to submit mining plan approved by the central government the first schedule of mineral where prior permission from the central government is required was increased from 27 to 38 so then the act was further amended in the year 1994 as we know that in 1990 from 1991 era of economic liberalization was set in in india so accordingly mmdr act was also amended and certain freedoms were given like maximum period of lease was lease for grant of prospecting license was met from 3 to 5 years then grant of uh, grant and renew grant of mining lease was met maximum up to period of 30 years then renewal subsequent renewal was met for 20, 20 years then number of minerals were in schedule 1 wherein prior approval from central government was required was reduced from 38 to 27 and there were three different sub sections were made in the first schedule concerning hydrocarbon minerals that comprises only two part two coal and lignite atomic minerals comprises of 11 different minerals and then metallic and non metallic minerals 
comprising 11 vendors. Then the act was further amended in the year 1999 because in order to address the issue of prospecting of large areas as well as deployment of the cutting edge technology to explore more area and a new type of mineral concession not, uh, known as reconnaissance permit was incorporated in the act and a preferential right for a person for grant of PL and ML was incorporated then extent of area for grant of RP was defined and you know that in 1990s there were a infamous cases regarding the illegal mining so it's in order to curb illegal mining state governments were empowered to make rules and accordingly provision was made in the act then the act was amended further in the year 2010 a new provision was made for grant of mineral concession for the areas containing coal and lignite on auction basis mode it was uh, for for a particular group of industry like iron industry for cement industry for power plants it was also provided that wherever the area has been granted to government company or uh, ultra power uh, power uh, mega power plant those a government can directly allocate such uh, coal and lignite areas to them then the mmdr act was comprehensively amended in the year 2015 to bring several reforms in the mineral sector like introduction of auction regime for grant of mineral concession to improve transparency then auction to take place only after a basic exploration has been carried out the concept of composite license like prospecting come mining lease was incorporated then informed lease period of 50 years was given for was given to all the leases then in order to address the concerns of the local population as well as the peoples affected by the mining a district mineral foundation was incorporated then in order to give a boost to the exploration a fund where a trust was created that is known as national mineral exploration trust however we will deal with this in the subsequent lecture in detail then the act was further amended in the year 2016 it provided for the transfer of captive leases granted to uh, granted otherwise than through auction in order to facilitate legitimate business transaction in order to encourage merger and acquisition wherein it was becoming a bottleneck because the leases were not getting transferred to the new entity so this provision was made then came the amendment was done in the year 2020 it was a basically a new era for indian coal and mining sector especially to promote the ease of doing business basically the coal which was coal mining which was hitherto reserved for certain categories and industries like uh, iron and steel cement and uh, power that was made open and it was uh, a commercial coal mining was uh, allowed then the central government transferred the uh, incorporated a provision for transfer of statutory clearances to the new bidders uh, so that they can they get the time period of two years so that, to get another licenses then prior approval of the central government was not required for certain minerals then advanced auction for mining lease before the expiry of the lease period and then non-exclusive recognizes permit holders to get other types of licenses were incorporated then certain amendments were made in coal mines a special provision act to bring it in conformity with the mmdr act also regarding incorporation of com composite license 
Then the last amendment took place in the year 2021. It was further to increase production and time-bound operation of the mines, then maintaining continuity of the mining operation after change of lazy. So removal on the restriction of end use of minerals was done so that there is no mines uh, allotted to a captive industry or non-captive. Then captive mine owners were allowed to sell minerals up to certain percentage on payment of royalty, etc. Then transfer of a statutory license, even the lessee was delinked from the mines and now the, the license, uh, statutory licenses can be transferred directly uh, can remain valid till the life of the mine. Then rights of certain concession holders were uh, taken away. Those uh, PL holders and RP holders who had some, some grace period that was uh, going to expire. So these rights were taken away through amendment of the act. Then extension of leases to the government companies was made then uh, non-exclusive reconnaissance permit which was not working was uh, done away with then allocation of the mines with the expired leases and condition of lapsing of mines were incorporated and so we will discuss in detail in the subsequent lecture so thank you very much